sign up for Amazon Prime, and watch popular movies and shows with Prime Video. Get ad-free music. Stream or download millions of songs 24-7. Listen to thousands of stations. Get fast free delivery for groceries, and millions of products, with Prime Delivery, all included with your membership. Click the link in the description below. Today's episode is called, Hooterville vs. Hollywood. Kate confers with Judge Drucker to see if she can legally prevent Billy Joe from going to Hollywood. Original air date, January 21, 1964. Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. straight to Greater Hooterville, I can give you a legal opinion. Go ahead, Sam. Since Billy Joe is still a minor, you could get me to issue an injunction impounding the $500 from that endowment policy until she's 21. Sam, that legal talk slides off your tongue like dew off a duck feather. Thanks. <laughs> that was my legal opinion. Now I'll give you my personal opinion. Don't do it. Why not? Because you'd probably get her so mad she'd up and run off anyway. You're right, Sam. What am I going to do? Tell you the truth, Kate, I'm fast running out of opinions. I tried every way I could to get her interested in a medical career. That's why Billy Joe's daddy, rest his soul, took out the policy in the first place. Old Bill sure was head up about his firstborn becoming a doctor. And now she's gone to Hollywood and maybe gets stranded out there. I can't think of anything worse. Uh, wait a minute, didn't you tell me Uncle Joe was going along as her manager? Yeah. Then I just thought of something worse. <laughs> hey. Maybe we could get old Dr. Pugh over here. He's helped solve a lot of problems concerning young people. Well, that's a great idea, Sam. He might be just the one to stop Billy Joe from going to Hollywood. Oh, positively. He'll figure out a way to keep her here for sure. She's as good as forgot about leaving right now. Floyd, go fetch Dr. Pugh. Sure thing. Hey, Charlie, remind me to buy an autograph book when I get back. What for? to give to Billy Joe so she can collect me some movie stars' autographs in Hollywood. Get out of here, bird brain. I'm going, I'm going. <laughs> Betty Joe. Yes, Uncle Joe, what is it? You know where your sister Billy is? In the kitchen, washing dishes. Washing dishes? That's some job for a movie star. I know, but until one comes along, somebody has to do them. <laughs> Smart alley kid. <laughs> Look at it this way, Billy Joe. Medical schools have mostly boys. Well, that part I like. And if you study real hard... Oh, that part I don't like. <laughs> well, I bet you could get that good-looking young Dr. Harris to help you. Oh, he is cute, isn't he? No, he sure is. Forget it. So is Rock Hudson, Troy Donahue, and Elvis Presley. And they're in Hollywood. Hey, you two, switch jobs. You wash and you dry. I don't want my little future star keeping her hands wet and catching cold and delaying our trip. Uncle Joe, be sensible. How can you take Billy Joe to Hollywood when you don't even know if she can act? There's no problem. Teach her how riding out there on the bus. <laughs> Who taught you, Uncle Joe? My knowledge of acting is a gift. Mom says you should give it back. 
Your mother will sing a different tune when Billy Joe and me hit it big in Hollywood. That's right. And when we get there, we'll send for you and, and Mom and Betty Joe. Yeah, we we'll live in one of them big Hollywood mansions with a swimming pool, cars for everybody. Can I have a limousine with someone to drive me around? Oh, sure, baby. Anything you want. Fine. Then line up Rock Hudson, Elvis Presley, and Troy Donahue to do the driving. I figure if I'm going to get in on this dream, I might as well go first class. <laughs> See? I've had cases ranging from pneumonia to ingrown toenail. But so far, medical science hasn't come up with a cure for Hollywooditis. Billy's got it bad, Doc. And Uncle Joe's aggravating her condition. Yeah, Uncle Joe. That's another thing that baffles medical science. <laughs> Doc, you brought Billy Joe into this part of the world. Now I'm hoping you can help me keep her here. You owe it to her, Doc. Speaking of Owen, did I ever pay you for delivering Billy Joe? Yes, yes, I think so. Bobby Joe, too. It's for Betty Joe you still owe me. <laughs> well, Doc, you better prescribe something for keeping Billy Joe here, or I'm going to worry myself into an early grave and you'll never collect. Oh, go on, Kate. I've had enough free dinners at your place to pay for the delivery of an entire baseball team. <laughs> you know, Doc, Charlie and me's in the same line as you. We deliver people every day. <laughs> well, good morning. Good morning. Dr. Harris. Hello there. Doc Harris, anything the matter? Oh, no, we're just running low on alcohol. Uh, drinking or rubbing? <laughs> rubbing. Good. I got a shelf full of that kind, but only about four fingers of the other. <laughs> Here you are, Doc. I'll add it to your bill. Thank you, Mr. Drucker. Well, uh, so long, everybody. Sorry, Bye, Doctor. Doctor. See you over at the office later, hmm? Too bad that handsome young assistant of yours couldn't have got Billy Joe interested in medicine. Yeah. He turned out to be the most dedicated, most brilliant, most useless doctor I ever met. <laughs> Poor fellow's a misfit. <laughs> the trouble is, you tried to push Billy Joe and Doc Harris together on a professional level. Now, you might have had more luck if you pushed them together on a patient doctor level. Yeah, it's a good idea, Doc, except for one little technicality. How can you make a patient out of a strong, healthy girl like Billy Joe? I had the same situation when I first went into practice. A beautiful, healthy young girl was gonna run off to the Broadway stage. But her folks and I got enough people to tell her she didn't look so hot. And the first thing you know, I had a bedridden patient with a bad case of the worries. You mean she believed it? Come next month, we'll be married 47 years. <laughs> Dorothy? <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, I don't think I could do that to Billy Joe. Kate, it's the only chance you've got. Yeah, but a mother tricking her own daughter. That just isn't fair. How's about we take a vote on it? Uh, right, all those in favor of tricking Billy Joe into feeling she's sick, raise your hand. Those against? Oh, Kate, does that mean you're not going to go through with it? Nope, it means I've been outvoted. Thank you very much, gentlemen. <laughs> Here's some more movie mogul we better add to our mailing list. Jack Warner, Hal Wallace, and Daryl Zanuck. Right. All right, now take this down. Dear movie mogul, it is with great pleasure I announce the forthcoming arrival in Hollywood of the blonde bombshell of Hooterville, Miss Billy Joe Bradley. Slow down, Uncle Joe. I can only take this down in longhand. Uh, when we get out to Hollywood, I'm going to have to get me one of them shorthanded secretaries. <laughs> okay, I got it. Go ahead. Please write to me, Joseph P. Carson, her personal manager, and tell us where you intend to throw the cocktail party for us when we get there. <laughs> well, it says in here they throw them things for the new stars. A cocktail party? Uncle Joe! Don't it... worry, honey. I ain't gonna let them give you nothing but soft stuff. <laughs> Billy Joe. Hi, Sam. Kate. How do you feel, Billy Joe? Just fine, Mr. Drucker. Why? Oh, nothing. Just thought you looked a little pale, that's all. <laughs> What's the matter? How do you feel? Great. You sure? <laughs> of course. 
Good girl. All right, let's get back to the letter. Let's see, uh, where were we? Hmm. At the cocktail party. Oh, yeah. Hey, I got a great idea. Put this down. And then, Mr. Movie Mo Gulls, you can take us out to that theater you call uh, Groman's Chinese, have some wet cement ready for Miss Bradley to stick her feet in. Don't you think that's going too far? Eh, of course it is. It's one of them nutty Hollywood customs. I guess we just have to go along with it. No, I mean... Hey, Joe, got something for you. Came in the mail. Looks like a newspaper, but don't read like one. Great, boys, great. I've been waiting for this. What's all fired great about a newspaper you can't make heads or tails of? This ain't no ordinary newspaper. It's variety. You know what that is? Yeah, the spice of life. <laughs> no. This is the Bible, a show business. It don't look very religious to me. <laughs> it ain't got nothing to do with religion. It just keeps show folk up to date on what's happening in the biz. Biz? The entertainment game. Get a load of this. Sure, Vegas bow, boffo. You know what that means? No, I don't think you do either. Oh, yeah? <laughs> well, just listen to this. Songstress Dinah Shore opens to capacity audience in Las Vegas last night. That's what it means, yokel. I reckon it's more like a dictionary than a Bible. Here's to me. <laughs> you rubes have been riding that Hooterville cornball through the sticks so long, you got no showbiz savvy at all. Yeah, well, let's see how much you got. What does this mean? Ban bong in Biff way. <laughs> Well, now, I, I've been out of the game for a while. Uh, right around 60 years. <laughs> Come on, Uncle Blowhard. What does it mean? <laughs> Band, bong, and biff wag. All right, so I don't know about that one. So what? I know about it. You do? Yeah, it don't mean nothing. Charlie made it up. <laughs> That's right, Floyd. <laughs> He can't see for looking up close without he has on his reading glasses. Man, <laughs> bog is Biff Wag. <laughs> Show Biff's Bible. <laughs> very funny, very funny. Why don't you two go wind up that choo-choo of yours and write it back into your padded roundhouse? You're pathetic, both of you. Come on in and sit down, boys. All right, Kate, we're coming. <laughs> Feeling okay, Billy Joe? You look a little peaked. You're the second person that doesn't think I look very well. Make it three. How do you feel? Pretty good. Glad to hear it. Come on, Floyd. Let's eat. <laughs> you sure you're okay? Fine. Fair, anyway. How do you think I look? Well, I ain't too sure, but I think I've seen you look better. <laughs> Dear. Take a look at myself. No fever to speak of. That doesn't mean anything. I could be carrying something. That's right, you could. Now, I pleaded with you to keep your hands out of that dishwater. But I'm sure I look all right. I think. You better go let your mother have a look at you. Yeah. I guess maybe I'd better. <laughs> well, work for Dr. Pugh. If Billy Joe falls for that nonsense about her being sick, I'll eat this plate. Mom. Mom, will you take a look at me? I think I'm getting sick. Hearty appetite. <laughs> Come over here, dear, where the light's better. Do I look bad to you, Mom? Mm, no, you don't look bad to me. But you're not saying I look good. You're right. I'm not saying that. No, oh, I'm worried. If one more person tells me how bad I look, I'm, I'm going to go straight to bed. Betty Jo, you haven't told your sister how you think she looks, have you? No, I haven't. Well, tell her. You look fine, Billy Jo. Oh, thank heavens. <laughs> From over here. But close up. Forget it. <laughs> Does it? I'm going straight to bed. <laughs> Put it there, Mom. For a minute, there wasn't where I was getting ready to put it. Are you sick? 
Come on, boys. You gotta run me out of town to get Dr. Pugh. Okay, Joe. Come on, Floyd. Uh, here, boys. Take some sandwiches with Thank you. Thank you, Kay. This is no time to worry about eating. The boys should eat to keep up their strength. Just to run that toy train? No, because they were exposed to Billy Joe. They were exposed? I was practically inoculated. <laughs> Oh, as well as could be expected, considering the circumstances. What is it, Doc? Is it contagious? What's wrong with her? How long has she felt this way? Not for long, just a few hours. What's wrong with her? She didn't say she was suffering from nausea or headaches or dizzy spells, did she? No, she just got to feeling kind of strange and went up to bed. What's wrong with her? Well, there's nothing like rest to get you back on the road to recovery. What's wrong with her? <laughs> has she complained about anything recently? Mm, not that I can think of. Well, that reduces the possibility of complications. For Pete's sake, Doc, are you gonna say what's wrong with her or ain't you? Until I've had an opinion from my colleague, Dr. Harris, I'm not saying for sure. I left word for him to join me. He should be along in about the time it takes to, um, eat a piece of pie, finish a cup of coffee. <laughs> sure thing, Doc. What will it be, apple, mint, or pumpkin? I'll take Hold it. Hold it, Doc. Until you've had an opinion from your colleague, don't say for sure. <laughs> How do you feel, dear? Oh, so-so. Did Dr. DePew tell you what was wrong with me? I couldn't get a word out of him. He said he could tell more after another examination. Um, why don't you fix your hair and put on some lipstick? Doctor's on his way up. He's already seen me like this, and besides, how can I get spruced up when I haven't an ounce of strength left? Well, suit yourself. I'll call the doctor. You can come up now, Dr. Harris. Dr. Harris! <gasps> you can't see me like this! <laughs> It's good to see you at least have half an ounce of strength left. <laughs> Who is it? It's Dr. Harris. Come in, doctor. <laughs> Hello, Miss Bradley. Hello, Dr. Harris. I'm sorry you're not feeling well. Oh, she'll start feeling better now that you're here, doctor. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Bradley. But she's already been looked at by one of the finest doctors in the medical profession. Why he wants me to conduct an examination, I'll never know. I hope not. I mean, I uh, hope it doesn't put you out. Not at all. I'm flattered. I'm thrilled. I'm sick. Aren't you going to start the examination? It just started. And you say that altogether it amounts to over 500 deliveries, huh? Well, of course, that includes 12 calves, 7 colts, and an elephant. An elephant? Twelve years ago, when the circus came through. Oh, yeah. I, oh, Kate. Dr. Harris. How's the patient, doctor? As far as I can determine, she's in perfect health. No fever? None. Temperature, pulse, respiration, all normal. Oh, that's marvelous, doctor. Absolutely marvelous. Do you realize what you've done for this girl? Nothing. I didn't even give her an aspirin. <laughs> Nothing, he says. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so impressed with the remarkable relationship that you have established between doctor and patient that I'm going to turn the case over to you. Well, thank you, doctor, but I... You can drop by every day for the next week or so just to make sure there's no sign of a relapse. Certainly, doctor. But I must say, it's hard to believe that girl's been sick. It certainly is. Congratulations. Well, thank you, doctor. Okay, Billy Joe, now first we'll start with a serious pose. How does this look? Like you just swallowed a bottle of castor oil. <laughs> Very funny little baby sister. Now don't go getting your sister upset, Betty Joe. I'm taking some professional pictures of her. Professional pictures? To send to Hollywood. Give them movie moguls a preview of coming attractions. <laughs> All right, Billy Joe. Now hold it. Okay, got it. Now sit up on the desk for the next one. This is a fine way for Billy Joe to be recuperating. Yeah, that's what I figured. Now give us a big smile this time and pretend you're waving to the Hollywood throngs. 
Got it. If Mom gets home from shopping and catches you doing this, you're going to get it. Did your mom go shopping? You know darn good and well she did. Well, it just so happens I picked this time of day because the light's good and because it's nice and quiet around here, and I thought you went with her. <laughs> All right, jump down, Billy Joe. We'll get some of them Hollywood-type action shots. Now, I want you to come over here and pretend that Tony Curtis is chasing you. OK, Uncle Joe. <laughs> Ready. Go. I said go. Why ain't you running? If Tony Curtis is chasing, I'm not running. <laughs> OK. Now, set that basin of fresh cement on the floor for your sister to put her feet in. Oh, that's what it's for. For a second, I thought it was going to be for something silly. Now, we'll show them how you're going to look in front of Groman's Chinese theater. Now, put your foot in the cement. Here, hold this. I got a terrific idea. I'll be right back. Now, when I count three, you flash that on and off at your sister. Uncle Joe, since I'm suddenly your assistant, do you mind telling me why? So she'll get used to the flash bulbs going off in her face. <laughs> oh, sure, I should have guessed. Okay, now, Billy Joe, give me your prettiest smile. One, two, three. <laughs> okay, come on. Now we'll go outside and get some shots on the front porch. Good idea, Uncle Joe. <laughs> Joe! <laughs> oh, no, look what's happened. Well, you're lucky. It could have been worse. I forgot I was going to have you do it barefoot. <laughs> Kate, tell me the Hooterville cannonball can fly, or tell me I'm growing my second head of hair, but don't tell me Billy Joe has seen that handsome young doctor four days in a row and isn't interested in him. Oh, she thinks he's a fine doctor and a great man and an asset to the community of Hooterville. But she's still talking about leaving for the community of Hollywood. Was you expecting him to fall in love, Kate? No, but I thought at least he switched from taking her pulse to holding her hand. The trouble is there's no challenge for Billy Joe. Yeah, if she thought there was another girl chasing him, she'd be right in there fighting for him. Sam, I got an idea. Have you finished setting up the happenings around town column? Yeah, why? I'd like to make one little change for one special private edition to be delivered to Miss Billy Joe Bradley. She never misses reading that column. And I want it set up so she'll sit up and take notice. Oh, no, I don't believe it. What's the matter, dear? Listen to this in the happenings around town column. What handsome young Hooterville doctor is secretly more dedicated to the girls in Pixley than he is to his practice in Hooterville. Ooh, that is a choice tidbit. What do you suppose it means? Mom, there are only two doctors in Hooterville, and one is married and almost 70. Dr. Depew? Is that who you think it is? <laughs> Don't be so naive. Is that what I am? <laughs> of course, where this item obviously refers to Clayton Harris, otherwise known as Dr. Double Life. <laughs> that rascal. He hasn't been trying to get you to go out with him, has he? No, darling, he sure hasn't. <laughs> oh, well, what do you care? You'll soon be going off to Hollywood, and you'll forget all about Dr. Harris. Do you think for one minute that I'm going to go off and leave him to those pixely females without putting up a fight? Well, what about Rock Hudson and all those handsome movie stars? They're no better looking than my Clayton. <laughs> Your Clayton? He will be. After all, we both share an interest in medicine. <laughs> I'm going to start college next year and eventually become a doctor. And I'll bet that's more than any of Clayton's Pixley girlfriends can say. No, there probably isn't one of them can say that. <laughs> After all, medicine's quite a challenge. Yes, and so is Clayton, that dedicated doll. <laughs> then you're saying that you're going to leave Hollywood and the like to those empty-headed Pixley girls. That's exactly what I'm saying. When I set my mind to something, I... Hey, Billy Joe, here's the latest issue of Variety. Dr. Harris, I'm so glad to see you. Oh, you certainly seem chipper today, Miss Bradley. Don't you want to look at this Variety? Just call me Billy Joe, please. Hmm? Oh, all right, Billy Joe. I, I figure the two people that share an interest in medicine as we do ought to get to know each other better. What's that? Didn't I tell you? I've decided to become a doctor. Well, that's great news, just great. 
What's she talking about? You heard her, Uncle Joe. She's finally getting interested in medicine. Well, now, don't that beat all? Just like that, she changes her mind. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> Mom, have you made up your mind what I'm going to become? No, dear. Well, if you do, just tell me. I don't want to waste a lot of time fighting it. Say, Bobby Joe, you ever think of going to Hollywood? Sure, I'd love to go to Hollywood. Great. When do we leave? Anytime. After I'm married, raise my family, and have enough money for a vacation. <laughs> well, Uncle Joe, as they say, that's showbiz. <laughs> Junction. Junction.